everyone and welcome to my new doll repaint video you know i repaint dolls approximately all the time i release a new finished doll every week friday and it means i have to work on them every single day to be able to reach the deadline and because of this i cannot really see my own progress anymore i don't see how i evolve as an artist and if I'm really growing, do my techniques change and stuff like this. And that's why today I've decided to make this kind of an experiment. I'm going to take this doll. It was made by me exactly two years ago. It's not the doll number one, but this is the oldest doll that I have now in my collection. I think this is the doll approximately number six. So, and if I tell you that right now I've made over 150 dolls in total, this is of course the very beginning of my doll artist career, so you can consider it the first or the oldest doll. So, I'm going to take pictures of this doll, then I'm going to take an acetone and I will remove her face completely. Yeah, I'm going to destroy my repaint and I'm going to recreate her face completely from the beginning the way I do it now but it's not just this I'm also going to take my old video where I was showing how I worked on this doll and I'm going to watch it together with you just to see if my own work if my own techniques have changed after all these years and after all this hundreds of those maybe i used to make terrible mistakes maybe i did something that is absolutely unacceptable for me now i have no idea honestly it was too long ago i don't even know what kind of materials i used on her i don't know the only thing that i can see that i used human lashes on her and i never do it on my dolls anymore already for a very long time so i think it's gonna be a very interesting experiment in the end we will be able to compare the picture of this doll before i destroyed her and the new edition of the same claudine doll and we're gonna see if Papa Natalia has grown a little bit after all these years of doll repainting. So for me it's also a very interesting challenge to see my own progress now after years. So let's take this doll, stain it acetone and let's destroy her face. Let's go! So let's look at this doll from close. I can tell you immediately that I have used too much of black pastels. And honestly her makeup and lips look strange to me. What kind of pastels did I use two years ago? Or was it just made with regular makeup? Because it all looks quite dirty and also glossy and greasy in some way and kind of a little bit changed, I don't know, especially the lip color, but I'm not sure. Let's probably start watching the old video to see what kind of pastels or other coloring powder could I use for to get this kind of result. In the beginning it's all kind of the same like now. These first steps haven't changed at all and the only difference is that I didn't speak in my videos and I really used the subtitles for a very long time. And by the way, does anyone still remember my old videos without the voiceover and just with subtitles? Write it in the comment. Her outfit I'm gonna keep, I think it's really cute and then I'm removing the eyelashes and warming up the head with the hair dryer to be able to take it off. And in doll repaint I still needed to cut her hair off, to clean the head from the inside and to cut off the ears. And then I'm destroying my old artwork with pure acetone. And it's always quite a painful moment, even when you're sure that the new version is going to be better than the one you're wiping off. And you can also see that it takes much longer to destroy the face made by me compared to the factory quality makeup. And here we go! 
exactly like I suspected in the beginning of this video, this doll's face was made using the eyeshadows. And now, two years later, I can clearly see the difference. I immediately noticed that there was something very wrong going on. You asked me many times if you could use regular makeup for working on dolls, and the answer is better no. I remember when I finally bought high quality pastels, I felt that my dolls kinda stepped to the next level, and you will see it also in the end of this video. Another disturbing thing is that I was starting the makeover immediately with contouring. Now I always sketch eyes and eyebrows first, and then I contour the face and the eyes as well. And now I'm contouring the eye area without having the eyes. Very interesting, what am I contouring? Something very abstract. Let's scroll a little bit forward to check how I sketch the eyes before I do it again on the same doll. Oh, wow, okay. First of all, girl, your pencil is not sharp. Hello, it's a pity I couldn't hear myself from the future. Take a knife, girl, and make your pencil sharp. Actually, I see this mistake almost always when I look at works of many beginners. Your pencils must be extremely sharp. Then the end result will look really precise and clean and another problem is that I was using like the complete eye socket of the mold. This is not really correct, you should sketch the eyes smaller than the mold, because above you will still need to draw the creases and below should still come the bottom eyelids, and I used here the whole space to draw just the eye itself. And now I'm drawing the creases already halfway to the eyebrows, of course. And I was also using a very light pink pencil to sketch. You can do it, of course, there will come shadows on top. But now I use light brown pencil to do the same job and it shows up on the surface much better. Okay, now I think it's time to do everything correct. First of all, I need to take a very sharp pencil in Caput Mortum color and now I will sketch the eyes and the eyebrows. You see, I'm not using the complete eye area of the face mold. I'm using this space for the eyelids as well, not just for the white of her eyes like in the old repaint. In the previous version, I first filled the eyes in with white and now I'm going to wait with it, because first I still need to contour her face and the white will become very dirty anyway during this contouring process. I also draw the shape of her lips now using the same very natural color pencil. Now let's finally contour the face, and first I need to prepare the pastels. I will use brownish colors for shadowing and contouring, and pink pastels to add some blush to her skin tone. I will put now again the two videos together and you will see the difference between makeup and soft pastels. Before I was basically making some dirty grey-brown mess on her face.
Okay, the shading is done. Now let's go back to the retro video. And what an amazing surprise again! I was using the black pencil as a main color straight from the beginning. Can you believe it? Wow, it's really bold. Nowadays I use black just in the very end to draw the lashes, the pupils, like maybe the eyeliner and all the rest I do with a combo of brownish pencils. It looks much more natural and less dirty than black. Now let's work on her creases and eyebrows in a more contemporary technique. But first I want to fill her eyes in with a white pencil since we've skipped the step in the beginning. For the eyelids and the eye creases I use brown pencils, like I said, not the black one, of course. And there is another thing that has never happened in the old face-up. For some mystic reason, I didn't draw the shadows on the white of her eyes. This step is a must. You have to show the round eye shape by applying shadows. If you're going for a realistic repaint, so this time I'm not going to skip this step. With a red pencil, I also work on the waterline. I want to make her lips more pink, her outfit is pretty colorful, so I want to have these bold colors in her face as well. And then the same like in the old video, I sketch the irises and the pupils. And what was the next step in the old video? Oh, <laughs> even more black! Oh girl, are you kidding with me? Even the eyebrows in pure black! Okay, the blue eyes we will repeat in a minute and again, the pencils must be sharper and the lines must be more fine. So, let's give color to her eyes now and if in the old video I just painted the complete irises in blue, right now I am going to draw the basic shadows and reflections. The top of the iris will be darker, there will come a shadow from the lashes and from the eyelid, and the bottom part of the circle will be lighter.
it's time travel again, and there I was busy with shadowing the eyelids. And like I thought already before, the bottom eyelids will be just pulled down to her cheeks. And of course, since I used the black pencil just for everything, I needed to make the eyelids all the time darker and darker to cover up the black pencil lines. I think in the end I was just using here pure black pastels, and that's why her face started to look really dirty. And meanwhile, in the real life, time repaint, I started drawing the highlights to give the eyelids more dimension. Ok, here it starts to look quite good, and let's see how is it going in the old timeline. Maybe it's time for the highlights there as well. No, no, I'm applying even more black pencil, no. no of course, of course, after applying black pastels, you have to make the lines a little bit visible again, and then you're using what? More of black pencil. No, and it's not just a black pencil, but it's not sharp black pencil. Aha, uh -huh. and then with the same dull white pencil, I was still trying to draw the highlights. And now it's finally a moment for the black pencil in my new repaint. You see how little I use it and how fine the lines are. Also add some extra highlighted accents to her face, and this step I've completely skipped in the previous version of this doll. Ok, the lashes, it's another pain in my heart. I take the same dull pencil and I draw seven thick separate lashes. Point. <laughs> End of story. Now I always go for very fine and very natural looking lashes. No, seven thick separate lashes. That's it. 
So I can tell now that for the old makeover I've probably used just three pencils. The black, white, blue, okay four, also the pink for the lips. And I also didn't care much about adding shadows to the white of her eyes and about the red pink waterline. Well, didn't didn't disturb me at all. Then with white acrylic paint I add reflections to her eyes. I was going to give her false doll lashes, but I think now I will draw the top lashes as well. I started to like this kind of painted on lashes lately, I don't know why. And now let's apply gloss to her eyes and lips. For the gloss in my old makeover, I remember I used a transparent nail polish. And it's also some risky business, I can tell you. You can do it, of course, but you have to work very quickly and you also have no right for a mistake. Because the nail polish, of course, contains acetone and it can easily destroy your fresh made eyes. In the beginning I never blushed doll bodies, then I got lots of negative comments that the face color didn't match a body tone, so I had just no other choice than to learn how to blush doll bodies as well. So now I'm sanding it with nail buffers, then I clean the body with an acetone free nail polish remover, I spray it with three layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant and then I blush it with the same pastels like I did it to her face. Before putting the head and the body back together, I still need to decide if I want to make a new wig for her. This pink one is cute of course, but I want to make her look more bold, colorful and more like contrast, so I think I will make this very intense blue wig for her. First I'm making a wig using my regular technique, then I cut her hair short and I style it with all kinds of devices and products. I use a hair dryer and a mini hair iron. Hairspray helps also a lot because it's really difficult to make short doll hair lay flat and pretty and you will have this mushroom hair most of the time.
hair looks very good now I think and I still want to make some extra colorful accessories for her. Using air dry clay I make a lollipop and I let it dry. After 24 hours of drying I spray the lollipop with Mr. Super Clear sealant, then I color it with watercolor pencils and in the end I apply a coat of glossy varnish on top of it. And then using a bottle ring, a couple of colorful buttons and a piece of silver fabric, I make headphones for her. And now let's finally take a look at the end result. I've decided to keep both of her wigs as a part of the set, so a new owner will be able to decide himself what hair color to give to this doll. And what color do you prefer, honestly? The pink or the blue? Tell me in the comment. You know, I could say in the beginning as a conclusion how important it is to use right professional supplies and have a high professional knowledge on what you're doing. But this is actually absolutely not true. Because the correct conclusion is that we should do the things that interest us. Even if we don't have enough knowledge yet or if we don't have the right supplies at the moment. I could learn everything I can do now just by practicing every day. By making these ridiculous mistakes and by learning how to correct them, by learning what works better and what doesn't work at all, there is no big achievement without making those clumsy first steps that will look funny even to yourself years later. So please create, express yourself and don't be scared, there is nothing bad or shameful in being a beginner and I will always be here to support you. Thank you for time traveling today together with me. Of course, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're for the first time here. Welcome to the family. And also please support my video with your likes if you enjoyed it, of course. Don't forget about the doll giveaway that is going on my channel right now and the details you can find in my last week doll repaint video. And this doll will be for sale on eBay again, the link you will find in the description box. And my work for today is over. Have a nice weekend and I will see you again in my new video the next week Friday. Bye!